Welcome to the work session for November 2nd, 2020. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Grace, please take roll call. Uh, Councilman Scarinji. Present. Councilwoman Rassinetti. Present. Councilwoman Riley. Present. Councilwoman Friedman. Present. Councilman Burns. Councilman Burns. Present. 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 Okay. Present. Councilman Strong. Present. President Scanlon. Present. All seven years. Okay, Mr. Evans, are you on the line with us? I am here. All right, welcome, Greg Evans. Uh, he's going to discuss the audit, and then whenever you're ready, Mr. Evans, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you this evening, and thank you again for the opportunity to work with the city. Uh, with me is Jacob Skevel, who is in charge of our field work and the audit. Um, you should have four documents. One of them is the presentation that I'm going to walk you through, and the other three are the reports that are summarized in our presentation. Um, should be pretty brief, not, not a lot of exciting news to report this year. Um, in the presentation on page two, we describe what we actually did for you. We did an audit of the financial statements as of December 31, uh, 2019. We did an audit of your federal awards, and we did an audit of your State Department of Transportation awards. All of our reports were dated September 28th, um, normally, those reports would have been due on September 30th. This year, the federal government pushed that deadline back to December 31st, um, obviously due to the pandemic. Uh, over on page three, the results of our audit. Um, again, uh, the uh, audit of the financial statements, we had an unmodified opinion, meaning that's a clean opinion. That's the highest level of assurance that we can give you. We believe everything was uh, properly presented and uh, no material misstatements. Um, in a court, in, along with the, uh, the audit, we, we evaluated your internal controls. I'm happy to report this year we did not have any findings relative to internal controls, and we did not propose any material audit adjustments. So the numbers that you were receiving during the year were the numbers that actually ended up in your financial statements. Uh, again, that's, that's the place where you want to be. Over on page four is the results of the single audits. Again, that's the audit of your federal awards. Uh, an unmodified opinion over those $4.2 million that were expended uh, from the federal government. We audited the Community Development Block Grant Program this year uh, for both compliance and internal control over compliance. Happy to report no findings there either. Um, in addition, your State Transportation Assistance Program was about $1.1 million this year. No findings there either. Um, all good news. Um, in, in terms of internal controls, when we come back this year for your 12-31-20 audit, um, we're going to have to take a close look at any controls that changed during the year uh, due to remote operations. So we may, in fact, be evaluating two sets of controls, your regular controls, and things that were happening uh, perhaps outside of the building or remotely. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on when we come back next year. Um, over on page five, um, Jake is going to walk you through just a couple of the financial highlights, and we'd certainly uh, be happy to answer any, answer any questions about those uh, financial statements. Hey, everyone. I'll review some of the highlights. These numbers are all as of the December 31, 2019. Uh, time period. 
Um, starting with the government-wide financial statements that start on page 13 in the statements. These statements are on the full accrual basis of accounting, which is similar to what you'd see in uh, typical private sector companies. They include all the assets and liabilities of the city, as well as all of the revenues and expenses uh, earned and recognized by the city during the year, regardless of the timing of actual cash transactions. At December 31st, the city's total net position uh, was around 167 million. The governmental activities had a net position of about 163 million and business type activities had about 4 million. A major reason for the deficit of unrestricted net position at 1231 is going to continue to be uh, the recognition of the long-term liabilities related to pension and other post-employment benefits that are picked up. At 1231 for the pension liabilities, uh, that liability amounted to about 13 million uh, in governmental activities, whereas the actual amounts contributed during the year that the city had to pay into the plan uh, was about 1.6 million for the ERS and about four and a half million for PFRS. There was a beginning balance adjustment related to a prior period adjustment recorded in the joint sewer financial statements of which the city has an asset recognized for its equity interest in that joint venture. The city has capital assets of approximately $305 million uh, recorded at cost less um, accumulated depreciation on those assets at 1231. And total long-term liabilities were around 100, 269 million. Of that, it included general obligation debt of $182 million. Uh, which reflected net additions of approximately uh, $57 million during the 2019 year. On to the fund financial statements, which begin on page 15 in the statements. The fund financial statements are prepared using the current financial resources uh, measurement focus for your governmental funds. Um, so that includes your general fund, or in the case of your proprietary funds and fiduciary funds, those are on the economic resources focus, which mirrors the government-wide statements. In the general fund, there was a fund balance increase in 2019 of about 1.1 million. That compares to a budgeted use of fund balance of about $3.2 million per the city's modified budget for 2019. This resulted in a positive variance to the budget of about $3.6 million um, once taking into account fee encumbrances at the end of the year. The city's unassigned fund balance is $12 million. Um, that represents about 20% of uh, the 2019 expenditures for the general fund. So that is a healthy position to be in that proves to be critical, um, especially given the current year, as we would be expecting the city to need to tap into that um, built up on assigned fund balance um, at times like these to um, make whole during any revenue shortfalls. Expenditures for 2019 were about $1.4 million less than budget. Um, the primary driver of that being um, employee benefit expenditures being about 900,000 under budget. And lastly, the capital projects fund will show a significant uh, deficit fund balance amount. Um, that's going to be driven by the about $28 million of restricted cash in the fund um, and a bond 
anticipation notes payable of about $58 million. At the time that's rolled into long-term financing, the fund will recognize the proceeds from that financing, and this should wipe out that deficit fund balance at that time. That wraps up the highlights. Um, does anyone have any questions on those? Yes, uh, <clears throat> Councilman Burns. Um, can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> the unassigned fund balance, $12 million, is, is that um, the fund balance that, you know, the the mayor in his speech would say that he's got $20 million in the fund balance. I uh, generally, yes. So that's going to be the fund balance. So the built up equity in the fund, um, not including any amounts already set aside for reserves or restricted for other purposes. Okay. So the unassigned fund balance. So if, so if we have a surplus in reality, so this is from 2019 and not 2020, but so the unassigned surplus, which would be the, I guess the actual surplus is $12 million and not the 18 that what we're saying. Um, I mean, if we have a fund balance of 18, but six of that million is assigned to something, like I know that we yeah. pay, we paid for the parking ramp, which was about a million and a half, I guess, of, of the fund balance. So I'm just I'm just confused now about the fund balance when, it, so, when I'm 18 or, or 20, and now I'm saying now you're saying that the unassigned money is only 12 million dollars. So the the 12 the 12 million is really your your savings account. So that you can do whatever you want with it. Um, the, the other amounts, uh, the assigned amount is typically money that you've appropriated for the budget for the following year. And then you have a restricted amount of uh, about 6 million. So that's that's amounts that you've committed to other projects in most cases. And then also you have about $2 million of non-spendable, which is by definition just related to assets which are inventory and prepaid expenditures. Mm -hmm. So you, you wouldn't be able to spend those, you know, okay. you know as so, the definition would tell you. So the 12 million is really what you're looking for in terms of you can do whatever you want with it, you know. Okay, and so the budget that we just passed, we are, I'm told we're spending $2 million of the balance. Is that $2 million of the unassigned fund balance, which then would leave us 10 million? Does that make sense? or? It would be, yeah. So your budget you're passing is for 2021, and obviously we're not to the end of 2020 yet, so we don't know where you will your land at the end of 2020. But at the end of 2019, yes, that two million would be coming out of the the 12 million that you have there. Okay, which leaves 10. Okay, hey, thanks very much. Absolutely, Joe. Joe let me let me clear this up for you, Joe. So. When the mayor's referencing a fund balance, he's talking about restricted and unrestricted. He's putting those together. Right. Okay. But I, I didn't, you know, realize that. So I got it now. All right. Thank you. All right. I just want to take the opportunity too to to thank Chuck Chager and his staff for you know their flexibility and their cooperation this year. Um, we did this entire audit uh, remotely due to the the pandemic. Um, the auditing standards didn't change. We still needed the same level of of audit evidence, and uh, Chuck and his staff were able to provide that basically in a, a seamless manner. So definitely a heavier lift this year, and we appreciate their help. All right, Greg, so let me let me ask you a question. So during your audit, you didn't see anything that you would be concerned about as far as the city of Binghamton is concerned, correct? That, that's correct. So would you, um, in your assessment, the city's finances are being managed well, correct? That's correct. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely.
Any other questions for Greg or any comments? All right, Greg, and I apologize. I, I lost the, your boss's name there, but I apologize. But thank you both for the presentation. Absolutely. We appreciate your thank time you. this year. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Let me get back to my agenda here um, because I lost, forgot where we were. Well, we're on to right, right at the top. Hold on, give me a second. All right, I apologize. So let's go on to uh, Pat McGinnis now with RL 20 208, please. You there, Pat? I'm here. Can you guys hear me? All right, so um, we got a awarded a grant from DASNY for $250,000 um, to be used for various projects up at Ross Park. Um, and it has no match on the city's half. So, Pat, what are these funds going to be used for? Um, so, on the, in the packet, there's a list of a breakdown, but it's going to be some shade structures, um, replacing the uh, roofs on a lot of buildings up there, some tree removal, some repairs, and then um, some lighting upgrades. Okay, great. Is there any questions for Pat? Comments? Yes, yes this is Councilman. Yes, go ahead, Councilman. It was both of us. Oh, Riley, you can go first. I'll go oh. after you. <laughs> so, um, hi there. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Um, I'm looking at the proposal of work to be done, and some of them were estimated to have been completed already this fall. Were you able to fulfill the deadlines as proposed on this um, projection timeline? So, no, we've been working with the state for probably over over a year, maybe closer to two years on this. So those um, target completion dates are shot now. Um, we are hoping, that's why it's expedited. We're hoping to be able to get the roofs on before the snow flies, um, at least the worst roofs on. Um, so they're a little bit off, but not too far bad. Thank you. Councilman Freeman, do you have a comment or a question, please? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. President. Hi, Pat. Um, Hi. I have I have two questions. First of all, um, so in looking through this, um, the letter from DASNY, there seems to be a lot of extra paperwork that's required, and that's that doesn't um, affect our um, our what's the word that I'm looking for us receiving the grant that that's just follow up that is just generally required. Yeah, so that's um, all that paperwork's pretty standard with these grants. Um, once we get council approval, um, I'll be getting everything signed off um, right away to be sent in. Um, in hopes that they'll give us the thumbs up to start these projects. Okay, great. And my my other question is that in the um, in the um, the agenda for this meeting, it says that there's 14 pages worth of documentation for this grant, but I only see relevant information up to page seven and then it appears that pages eight through um 14 have to do with later legislation so i just want to make sure that we're not missing any information here that was supposed to be included but was accidentally replaced by um no. this other legislation uh grace can answer that um, councilwoman freedom that was a mistake on our end um it must have just got mixed in there incorrectly so that was all for his ro 
Yeah, my paperwork that I submitted ended with the uh, proposed budget on page seven. Okay, so this this the last seven pages, that's just a duplication. It's not accidentally replacing anything. Um, those last seven pages should go with RL 20-207. Right, and I think they are there as well. So it was just, I guess, a duplication. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't missing any information. All right, thank you. Other questions on RL 20 208. Yeah, it's uh, Joe Burns again. Hey, how are you? Hi, Pat. Uh, uh, this is totally not having anything to do with this, but any word on the uh, carousel being moved? Uh, so we are still waiting um, for some approvals from New York State on that. Um, they've approved part of the project. We're waiting for the next part to be approved. Okay, does it look good or think it'll happen? So planning, planning really knows more than me, but I can't see any reason why not. We're trying to protect a uh, historic structure. Right. And that's, you know, right in the boundaries of what they want done, so. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions for Pat? All right, Pat, thank you. No problem, take care. All right, uh, RL 20-211, John Paddock. Yes, this is to amend the uh, 2020 uh, building equipment maintenance budget, looking to transfer 10,000 uh, into the uh, equipment repairs and maintenance line uh, 5182.54620. Basically, it's we've got some uh, lighting issues on Upper Court Street, and we also have an issue at Ely Park, so need to get those uh, two issues corrected and repaired. And the second part of this is to transfer $8,693.12 into the uh, um, um, professional services line because we had a, a potential COVID contamination at the DPW garage and that needed to be completely sanitized to, to um, minimize our, um, our um, contaminations there. Obviously we've been essential employees since March when this happened and we've been very fortunate to contain this but we did have a positive case and we wanted to limit our our um, our potential responsibility there so um, we brought in Sir Pro who did a pretty good job. Any questions? Question on 20-211 please. What's that? Hi, Mr. Paddock I think we're all set thank you. Okay, thank you. Earl 20-206, Steve Carson. Grace, is Steve out there? He is on there, but it looks like he's muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so 20-206, that to amend a previously done resolution um, to award additional money to Binghamton Hot. Um, the applications that went out uh, structured the amount of money available for businesses to respond to COVID. And uh, they fell into the category that would grant you $3,500. Um, we did legislation and somehow it flipped us and only gave them $3,000. Um, so this is just a correction to that to be able to amend them amended to give them extra, the full amount that they, they were eligible for. Questions on 20-206. Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. Hi, right, Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, hi, Steve. I hi. have a clarifying question. I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So the the increase in funding is by, um, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I miss, I misread. Um, so my, my second question, or I guess the first question that I'm vocalizing is that this is um, 
this is money that is coming straight from the CARES funding. We're just um, earmarking it, or not earmarking it. We are um, taking it from, like, I guess, general CARES funding and specifically putting it toward this, um, toward businesses. Is that correct? Or we, Binghamton Hot specifically? We, we already, uh, a while ago, we already uh, approved splitting the care the COVID CDBG money into various chunks. One of them was mm -hmm. program business assistance, which the sum total I believe was uh, over 100 something, possibly 200 something thousand dollars. So there's plenty of money in that sort of chunk of funding. Uh, a re resolution 20-85 was a large list of businesses we were going to assist. The sum total of that was 35,500. So to be able to give additional money to Binghamton Hots, we'd have to not only modify their chunk, but modify the total chunk as well. The, the money's already been allocated to businesses uh, in, in far excess of the amount that uh, Resolution 20-85 dealt with. So no, okay. it's all business assistance. Has, it's already been um, obligated from city council and the mayor's office to assist businesses. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. No problem. This is Councilwoman Riley. Sure, go ahead, Councilwoman. Yes, hi, Steve, how are you? I'm doing all right, how are you doing? Good, good. I've been reaching out with a few questions, so I'm glad you're here tonight. Mm -hmm. We know that we allocated about 35,000 from that line for business assistance in the CARES funding. And we talked about strategies to, again, uh, request a second uh, application process for those that were not funded or those that have been impacted by COVID since the first grant open the grant process. Is there a date for the new or the second round of funding? We do not have a date set up yet for that. But it is on in, in, in progress. We There have been some discussions about it. Uh, we're still trying to clarify the first round. We It would be difficult for us to provide, say, assistance above and beyond what we did in the first round um, without providing additional money to those first round agencies. So that's something we're having to, to struggle with. If we want to expand the program, then we have to review what we did with the previous application uh, system. So um, we're also trying to figure out um, better ways of marketing and reaching out to people. Um, myself, personally, I've run into businesses that didn't even know we were offering this as something we could apply for. And I gave them the contact information to um, get on a sort of a mailing list for when that does happen. So. But unfortunately, there's no yet set time on when we're going to go out for applications on the, the second sort of round of business assistance. Perfect. My second question is mm -hmm. regarding the rental assistance. Mm -hmm. Do we have um, a target? Uh, do we know how much was supported in terms of our, our landlords and our, our residents that sought rental assistance and how much has been kind of earmarked to pay or have been paid out? Yeah, the uh, city council and the mayor's office approved uh, roughly a quarter of a million. Actually, it might be specifically a quarter of a million for rental assistance and another quarter of a million for uh, mortgage assistance for homeowners. Um, those programs are active. We have started those programs. There's also uh, about 500, well, 477,000, I think, in ESG COVID rental assistance, which targets a similar type of demographic, but it's got its own rules and and right. it's one of those things of, of all the programs, uh, the strictest qualifications where someone's going to be directed to. Um, so all three of those programs are active and going. Um, we've not gotten any applications for the CDBG rental assistance, um, probably because it's a, sort of a smaller window that someone would qualify in where they wouldn't qualify for ESG. That being said, um, we have been looking at expanding that and allowing people to use that just for just for utility assistance, uh, because there are, we've been running into situations where people were able to pay their mortgage or their rent, but they didn't pay their utilities, and now they're worried that their utilities will be shut off. So we've sort of expanded that to allow the utilities to just just utilities to be covered as well. So all those oh. programs are active. If anyone has any questions or wants to apply, have them call two one one. That is definitely apply to that. If you if you feel you qualify, call two one one. Well, we've been sharing the information. I'm asking from a council perspective, can you give us about how much in terms of dollars have been 
we know how much was earmarked, but do we know yeah. how much actually uh, approved and paid out in those two lines as well? ESG has been about 50,000. There's been $0 in the rental assistance for CDBG. Mortgage assistance, we paid several. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm, I'm, I'm just envisioning the Excel spreadsheet in my head. I would say roughly a dozen or slightly more than a dozen homeowners have been assisted with this program. And that includes mortgage, utilities, water, all those things. Okay, so we have about 12. So we can continue to uh, support and highlight these uh, revenue, these support mechanisms to our constituents that are in yeah. need, correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If someone calls and they and they, they want more information, have them call 211. If they just want to know a little bit of information about the program, uh, I could probably answer some questions, but the easiest thing is to call 211 see if they qualify. Perfect. My last question. Um, mm -hmm. We did we receive another allocation? Yes. We have, okay. We've received another round of ESG and CDBG COVID allocations. I expect to do the first public hearing for that at the same time you guys have your next uh, work session. Um, so we'll probably have a virtual public hearing for that next round of funding. Uh, we can take a little bit of time with this simply because we've not used up the first round of funding. So it's not like it's such in demand that people have used up this money very quickly. So we have time to make sure we, 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 we put this money exactly where the public needs it and the public wants it to go. So we're, we're at that beginning stage of that. I'm expecting to have CDAC make a recommendation probably sometime in December. December. So this would also be a good time for council people to submit their innovative strategies and ideas they may have heard for CDBG as well as ESG funding from other areas, right? Sure, absolutely. Uh, member CDAC is just a uh, an advisory body. I would strongly encourage the city council members have any ideas, talk to the mayor's office uh, because he'll be the one who's presenting the budget and the proposed project. So uh, you can definitely go through CDAC as well, but um, you know, it's, it's, you can probably communicate much more easily with the mayor directly. Um, but yeah, either way will work. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate it. No problem. Other questions on 20-206. Oh, and I would like that expedited, please, if possible. We will expedite that, Steve, no okay, problem. All right, hearing no more, let's go to 20-207, please, Steve. Okay, so that is, this is the intermunicipal agreement. This is also something I would like to get expedited. Um, the reason it's sort of delayed and it's been taking this so long is um, trying to communicate with uh, my my half at the town of Union has, has been, we've been back and forth on what we need, what we don't need, what we wanna do. So anyway, this is basically uh, an IMA to allow us to uh, share services on a case manager with um, the coordinated entry system. This is technically, because we don't have this, we technically don't have a contract with our coordinated entry system yet. Um, so we're trying to get all that taken care of and, and, and bundled together. Um, the main thing of this is we wanna make sure that if an individual manager is assisting, instead of having to divvy up their time between County Union and City of Binghamton, they just do whatever they need to be done. So if it's more city people calling in, if it's more town people calling in, that one case manager, or possibly two, can simply focus on the task at hand and getting clients taken care of in the time. Uh, I like to think of it as we need two and a half case managers, county unions, one and a half case managers, and this is how we work it out. Um, so once this is approved, we'll be able to sign off on the agreement. Uh, the language is pretty basic. Um, you'll have to check with Ken. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to Ken said it was okay. Uh, the other thing we wanted to focus on was that um, we indemnify both agencies or both uh, municipalities in cases that there's some situation with that case manager and the clients they serve. So that's pretty much the point of this is to make sure everybody knows where everybody stands. With this. Uh, the contract is already approved, but just hasn't been signed because it addresses this. And we have a secondary contract with them as well that haven't, hasn't been approved because of this. So. All right, Steve, great. Could you make sure this one's expedited to 20-207, please? Yes, I will do that. And is there any questions for Steve on 20-207? Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. On the, on the Ken Frank with 20-212, please. Good evening, everybody. 
we spoke about this briefly during my budget presentation. Uh, our outside legal services fees are going to be well in excess of the budget this year. That's primarily due to a number of cases in which uh, my office are actually factual witnesses in the cases. So we need to use the services of outside counsel. And in some cases, it's just for specific expertise. Any questions? All right, Ken, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's uh, let's discuss the 2021 City Council calendar. I request that we delay this until after the budget, so obviously the budget now. So let's talk about the calendar. Um, if you have any concerns, uh, speak up, please. Any recommendations, please speak up now. Yes, this is Councilman Friedman. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so Lee and I spoke about this, um, but in September, there are two meetings, the September 7th and 8th meeting conflict with a Jewish holiday, Rosh Hashanah. Um, it's a very important Jewish holiday. And since there, that um, those two meetings come after a a three week break instead of our normal two week break, I would suggest that we move those meetings maybe one week earlier. So there will still be um, two weeks in between uh, those meetings. So if we move them from let's say September 7th and 8th to August 30th and September 1st, then there will still be two weeks in between and there will be no conflict with the Jewish holiday. Councilwoman Freeman, we certainly can accommodate that and we will. So Grace, make a note please to change those dates. I will do that. Thank you. Yep. Any uh, and other questions? About? Go ahead, please. I was gonna say there's another um, smaller Jewish holiday that is also in conflict. So Rosh Hashanah is one of the most important Jewish holidays of the year. Um, I personally do not work on Rosh Hashanah. There's another Jewish holiday, Sukkot, that's on September. It starts on September 20th. So the thing with that is that I, I personally do work on Sukkot, but I don't know if that's something that we might also maybe want to change just um, in case we have any Jewish constituents that might want to attend meetings. I don't know if that's a consideration we, we want to make. I personally will be able to work on that holiday, though. <clears throat> Does anyone have any comments or concerns about uh, what House One Friedman is saying? I, if we leave it Monday, Wednesday, then I would say if that was a work session, maybe we would do that, but, but, or, but for a, I'm sorry, a business meeting, but if it's a work session and, and Councilman Friedman's gonna work on that day, then I think we would probably leave that one in my opinion. Anyone have a concern with leaving that date where it is? All right, Councilman Friedman, if you're gonna work, we will work that day and we'll leave that date alone. Mr. President. Okay, that's, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we may, thank you, Mr. President. As it relates to the month of September, um, you know, there's uh, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. Um, we also need to keep in mind of um, our uh, our Deputy Corporation Counsel, uh, Sharon Sorkin. So we may need to take her into account with that as well. All right, let's go. Yeah, no, that's a good point, Joe. We'll leave that one loaded as is. Great. Um, can you check with uh, Ms. Sorkin to see if it's an issue with her, if it's a problem? Please. Talk to her tomorrow. All right, thank you. Can, can I throw out a question? So if we're sure. going to move the meetings to the September, uh, excuse me, August 30th and September 1, then we're gonna skip the next week. Are the next set of meetings on the 13th and the 15th or the 20th and the 22nd? Because you're gonna have to uh, build that three week gap. Uh, this is Councilwoman Friedman. Friedman. 
Yom Kippur right. is on September 15th. So I would suggest keeping the the other meetings as they are if we are going to recognize that those are on Sukkot and if um, Assistant Corporation Counsel is okay with that. But mo moving it one week earlier actually interferes with a major Jewish holiday. Yeah, no, I, I I understand. So, but we'll have meetings on the 30th and the 1st, and then the 20th and the 22nd. Yeah, I think that makes. Then we still have those two weeks in between for those, and then, and then we're off on the labor, and that's Labor Day two weeks. So I think that makes sense on multiple. Fronts. I think that's a good idea. Okay, I just want to make sure that changing the one date is not a problem. I understand it completely. I just want to make sure that everybody agrees then when the next set. And they'll still be the 20th and the 22nd. So that's where the two week gap will be. And just to remind you, while I certainly think we should seek out Sharon's opinion, uh, she won't be working in the Office of Corporation Counsel next September. Right, as we discussed, she'll, she'll be working in the personnel office in 2021. At least that's the plan at the moment. Councilor Friedman, are you all right with those dates? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, that's what we'll do. We'll move forward with this. Uh, is there any other questions or concerns about the budget or the I mean about the calendar for next year? It was uh, suggested we change the, uh, the business meeting till 6 o'clock so it coincides with the work session. What's your thoughts on that? Let me hear your thoughts on that, please. Does anybody have an opinion on that? I do. I, I would like to do that. I think it makes them even. I think even the last two weeks, I think 515 for everything would be too early, but it worked, you know, this last month and it kind of gets us rolling and gets us out of there. So I think that would be way too early, but I think 630, in my opinion, is, I don't want to say too late, but it just, it creates an awkward time in between most of the time. I think if we if every six every meeting, I think it just makes it easier. And once we get back, hopefully down to City Hall, I mean, you know, we were at a lot of planning meetings and we were a lot of planning meetings before COVID, and those are at 5:15. And if people need to get there, they get there if it's important to them. So at six o'clock, it should be no problem for people to get down there. So that's just my thought that I like I like having them both the same. Does anyone have a concern with moving the business meeting till 6 p.m., from 6.30 to 6 p.m.? This is Councilwoman Friedman. I, I wouldn't say I necessarily have a concern, and if that's what everyone wants to do, I, you know, I'm perfectly happy to, to do that. I, I personally prefer a little bit, I prefer for the meetings to start at 6.30, but that's just because I feel um, less rushed after work when I get out at five o'clock, but certainly that's not something I feel particularly strong about. So I'm happy to be outvoted on this one, but I just wanted to voice my personal opinion. Does anybody else have an opinion on this? This is Councilwoman Riley. Um, I don't have any opinions about changing, changing the time, but I just want to make sure we market and broadcast this as soon as it's decided so that our people that phone in and or watch are aware of this change. For, for everybody on council, your annual calendar is something, it's kind of built into the code with an understanding that it can change based on holidays. Uh, the meeting time is actually built into your code. So if we're going to amend that, we, we need to amend the code. And we can do that at a you know at subsequent meeting, and that will be part of letting the public know as well. My personal opinion, point, um, yeah. Mr. President, this is uh, Council yeah. Member Um I mean, I I don't have a strong opinion uh, either. You know, six or six thirty would work, but I do think for just for consistency, you know, to say six o'clock for both work session and and business meeting, it just I think I would prefer it. Uh, I would prefer it that way, but again, it's, you know, I, I don't feel strongly about either way. I'm not hearing a lot of strong opinions out there. I guess we can put this to a vote. Um, 
and that's the probably obviously the way to do it. Majority would, and I don't have a strong opinion either on this. I really don't. So um, let's all uh, put this to a roll, roll call vote and put this to bed if we can. Um, so great, can do a roll call vote to see what um, if let's uh, let's let's do the vote on moving the business meeting to 6 p.m. from 6:30 to 6 p.m. Can I just throw out that what you're really doing is just saying who who's who's agreeing to sign out the legislation to do so? You actually need an RL, and I need to do legislation and ordinance to amend the code to change the time from right. 6:30 to 6. So I guess that's what I'm doing. I guess it's a straw poll, Ken, but I, I guess that's what I'm doing is he wants to sign out the RL tonight or just to let it go and see who signs it out. Is that what we're going to do? Yes, that that that's fine. But okay. I, I just want right, to make so it clear. You're not, decide, you're not voting on it tonight. You're voting on whether or not to bring it to the floor so you can vote out on it at a business meeting. I, I guess at this point we can decide. Uh, again, graceful announce. Are the, all these RLs are soon signed out. Um, unless you let her know, and so let's do the same thing with that. Um, if you're okay with moving it to six o'clock, we can 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 get the word together, change the code at our next meeting, um, and we'll go from there. So I guess there's no need for a straw vote either. Here, we can just decide who's going to see if the DRL is signed out. Then we can vote later on. This is Councilwoman Riley, and this is not an expedited process. So this will be coming back next meeting next business session next next work session and business session correct ken this does ken does this need to be expedited if we're going to change the code it just needs to be done before 2021. all right so you're right councilman riley you're 100 correct we'll discuss it at the next work session and vote on it at the next business meeting in two weeks so if Mr. there's President, no discussion can I, can about can I throw out one other thing? Uh, during the budget sure. process and in the memo I sent to everybody, one of the other things that I think council should be doing is setting the mayor's salary for the 2022 to 2025 term. And that's something I'd like everybody to think about between now and your next work session. Uh, it's something that you have to initiate. It's not coming from the mayor's office. All right, great. So again, that's for 2022 so we're not deciding the current mayor's salary that'll be going place 2022 grace can you put that on the calendar for the next work session please yes, I will. if there's no other discussion on the calendar we can move on to pending legislation okay, and grace um, you can read those please for the pending legislation uh, we have rl 20-201 binghamton property insurance and Furniture transfer for the joint sewage and then RL 20 203 contract with Excellus for dental and vision administration. All right, if uh, anybody, does anybody have anything else you'd like to discuss before we adjourn the meeting? Yes, this is Councilwoman Riley. Yes, Councilwoman, go ahead. Hi there. Um, during our budget meeting, uh, we discussed having. Chief Zakuski at our session. So I subsequently sent an email as a reminder and in hopes that we would get some questions answered. Um, is that on our calendar? I had a, I had a discussion with Chief uh, Zakuski. And Chief Zakuski is asking any questions you may have for him to put him in writing. He will go through the clerk's office. So therefore, all the city council people will know what the questions are and he can respond through writing back to who's ever asking the questions so that's a no he won't appear <clears throat> he, he just said he, he'd rather have you right now I'm, I'm not sure of his schedule angel so right now he'd rather have you set, submit the questions in writing and then he can answer them okay. again from the clerk's office now i did send it out did all of you receive the questions i think i cc'd everyone right yeah, yeah, we got him. Okay, so I did send them out um, Friday. So in lieu of an appearance, we will have a response to the question. Is that what he's he yes. giving? Yes. Okay. We'll answer your questions and get back, yes. Again, yes. through the, the questions and distribute all the answers so everybody has them, yes. Okay, I don't think I cc the clerk, but I'll send to her. But well, I did 
to counsel and Chief Zakuski directly. And I, I can okay. let everybody know that Chief Zakuski is actually testifying at a proceeding this week. So please be okay. patient if you don't get an immediate response. Uh, he's been, he'll, he'll be on the stand for a few days. Okay, thanks, Ken. So, Chief, if you, if you submit these questions already, Chief Zakowski will have a chance to answer in detail. And uh, so I think it's the best way to move forward with this. Anybody have anything else they'd like to discuss before the meeting is over? Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. Yes, Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. President. I received some feedback from a constituent who was listening to the meetings via phone and unable to stream them. So they, they weren't able to see the video and they said that it was, they, they would have appreciated if everyone is able to announce themselves before they speak. And I think generally we're good about doing that, but I think sometimes we rely on the fact that we assume that people can see the video of who's speaking so they they asked if i could mention that um so we can be cognizant of announcing our names so it's easier for people to follow the meetings who are calling in and and unable to see the video okay councilwoman thank you thank you yep anything else you'd like to discuss Yes, this is Councilwoman Riley. One more time, one more thing. I just wanted to share yep. with my fellow council people. Oh, I'll just send an email, but there was an update regarding the NICOM membership. There's a training coming up in, a, in an ongoing process to develop new and existing council members. So once we get that information, I'll definitely share it with you guys if you're interested. Just FYI. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman. That, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Is anything anybody else want to discuss before we sign up? I'll take a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. So moved. Second. Need a second. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.